Hey everybody, Glenn Hausman here. Yes, 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 it's another great day and we're doing another fabulous live event. I'm super excited to be doing this one today because we've got our, our friend R.A. Morcha who's gonna be coming on any minute now. We're gonna teach you all about that customer journey. You may have realized that all the major hotel companies have finally awoken up to the whole idea that the customer journey is absolutely essential. The whole notion of getting into the person's head from the moment of inspiration for a trip all the way through booking, through that stay, and then following it through afterwards. And that's the topic that we're gonna be talking about today. First, I'd like to thank my good friends over at uh, SkyTouch over there. They are, of course, the industry's leading PMS, and they are based in the cloud, and I would highly encourage each and every one of you to check them out at skytouchtechnology.com. Now, before we get started, it would be super terrific, awesome, if all of you guys would share this link with your friends and family out there and get them on the show, get them watching what we are doing and we'll have a really good time. So without further ado, let's bring in the one and only Mr. Ari Nord straight from Norway through the great state of Tennessee. How are you, sir? Great to see you. Well, uh, thank you very much, Glenn. I'm uh, and uh, and actually, I'm uh, I'm in the great state of Mississippi. Oh, I forgot you're in Mississippi, <laughs> not Tennessee. I, you know, I'm thinking of, I, I I got barbecue on my mind, and I like um, I like te uh, Tennessee barbecue a little bit better than Mississippi barbecue. Nothing personal against you and your great state over there. No, no, it's uh, no offense taken. <laughs> So uh, thanks for, for joining us. So for those of you that don't know Ari March, he's been around for a, a, a while now, and he's a really, really good at helping identify how hoteliers out there, such as yourselves, can find success um, in connecting better and making more emotional digital connections with your customer. And that's what we're going to be talking about here today. So uh, you know, I'd really like to, uh, I'd really like to get this started. Maybe he tells a. a quickly a little bit about who you are, your history, and why you're going to be able to wow us today with all of your insights in the hospitality business. Yeah, thanks, Glenn, and thanks for the great introduction here. And, uh, and welcome, everybody, here. And uh, of course, um, as you know, my name is Ari Mork, um, and I'm from the beautiful country of Norway. So that's why I'm blonde, tall, handsome, uh, and uh, I love hospitality. And, and yeah. my background is... is uh, Pretty much from customer service. Mm -hmm. I worked in a long time in, in the customer service industry in, in various settings. I worked with in, in, in the yeah. social security where I helped kids with uh, particularly related to helping uh, families with kids that had disabilities. And I also, uh, uh, when I came here to, this, to the States, I, I started to work with hotels in reservations, I was most with IHG or International Hotel Tel Hotel Group. And, and uh, of course, anybody here, if we have any students out here that's that's watching us today, I highly encourage you to start out in reservation because that's a unique perspective you get of, of, of hospitality. So that was an awesome experience. Shout out to my friends at uh, IHG. Uh, and then, of course, there from there, I moved on to working at um, at the hotel, I worked at the Sheraton, which was a uh, today is actually a Marriott. But my friends in at Sheraton in North Charleston, South Carolina, I have to kind of say hi to them. Uh, I love them, and uh, it's just a great uh, was a great experience. And there, I worked from everything in, in front desk, housekeeping, bellman. I was in uh, in management there, and and of course, in addition, I have taken a, a certification to. Uh, the, Company like uh, Hesmai from from digital marketing and hospitality. I would take right. work with my friends at Econel, as you see, Hotel Year for Life. Uh, nice. To, yeah, uh, Econel, where I've taken certification in in uh, hospitality management, and and uh, I started on social media back in. I was on Twitter pretty much this almost when they released it, and same with Facebook. So I've been been a long time with 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 uh, on social media what what i saw when when i worked at the hotel that uh, that the, there was a huge gap between uh, the the between the skill set of of the the hoteliers that that there was lack particularly in it knowledge mm -hmm. and and some of the tools that we saw was coming up that the hotels was not using it in, in a setting right. to helping particularly with the customer service that was important at the time. And now it have evolved more towards the, the, the experience it, itself. So, so that's when I started kind of in uh, around the beginning of, of, or end of 2009, 2010, I started my blog. 
and and from that time I, I focused very much on the on the customer service customer journey and the customer mm -hmm. experience in, in in a setting that is right benefited beneficial for for whole that's, yeah excellent I mean um, uh, so what we're going to talk to today about is that whole understanding of the the commercial um, the customer journey out there and you guys know you know the foam is getting thicker it's getting harder it's getting much more difficult to be able to connect emotionally with the customers out there and create that impact with them at the top of the customer journey. And that would be the inspiration phase. That's why we're going to talk to Ari today about how to make those connections, how to see those people get through that entire cycle so you out there could get them to vibrate with love and light at your hotel. So, um, you know, Ari, I got to ask you before we get started into the thick of it, why do you think that only in the last year or two, hoteliers have really woken up to understanding the importance of the customer journey. Uh, well, the, the reason for that is, is, of course, what what we see that is is is, uh, is the technology and and access to technology, uh, and particularly to to mobile devices, and and what we saw. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly after the last uh, uh, economic downturn, uh, which is very common when when we have a dip in a, in the economy, that uh, we see that last re minute reservations is is getting more common and and peaks typically when when there's a, a, a dip in the economy. But what we saw after this, the last uh, change in the economy, is that this dip just continued. Mm -hmm. Because because of the technology, mobile devices was continued to develop uh, the technology, and we saw that the applications like particularly Hotel Tonight uh, was was getting uh, out there and and uh, educating the mm -hmm. customers of how they can get better deals, better service, better information in in real time. So it's it's a connection of of uh, uh, the technology in that was coming in at the right time. Uh, for for the the processes that deal right. with the customer journey, and and of course the customer journey, part of it that, that customers also discovered that now they actually have a voice from using the social media channels and social media. Now how they use the voice can all of course be all discussed, and, and and we we don't need to go into the details of, of how if if we agree or disagree mm -hmm. how the voice is always used. But but that's that's the what the, the bottom line is that the customers now has a voice that they can use, and they expect real time engagement with with uh, with hotels. Right. Um, I'm just uh, I'm just excited that the uh, the hotel industry is getting back on the train with uh, with this particular strategy out there. So why are is it important to really be able to connect with the customer as early in the travel cycle as possible? And I think for the most part, what we're here talking about is more of that leisure travel thing, not business travel. I think for uh, all of you folks out there that do a lot of business travel, you know it's already predetermined what area you're going to stay in, if not that specific hotel where the event is taking place. So this is more about creating opportunities outside the business travel and focus on leisure. So uh, how do you how do you see that part of it about getting into people's heads earlier and where do you even start? Do you even start maybe perhaps before the inspiration cycle when it comes to creating great social media content? Yeah, uh, uh, well, the insp inspiration is, is part of it, it, it because this is, like you said, is, is a cycle. <clears throat> or, or what's what's important for us when we look at the processes today, it's like we look at in in the front end, we look at the building the communities because that's what what we see particularly right. when with the digital experience today. That what what brands is understanding is like when you look at the bigger brands and and, and you look at the new brands that's coming. If, for example, Airbnb is that they have understood the value of, of the community, and in, it's within the community that things is happening today. Is that's where customers like used we used to in the past like in, in, in we, we used to find an inspiration through through the magazines that we went to the two local tour operators, and or we went to in, into families or the local groups that we was part of, and that's where we usually got the the the, the inspiration. Now we see that the customers they are coming. To the communities right. that, that they find on LinkedIn, they find on Facebook, they find on whatever channels that that's the preference, and and that's the key that that we had to be part 
that's why it's so important. What, what I say is it's important that we we we, we need to listen. Mm -hmm. We need to care. We need to connect, and we need to build relationship. But that's right. in con con context with this journey. So 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 that the value we deliver back to the customers is relevant and and as up to date as as possible for for, for the experience that they're looking for because the journey we we know that they the journey today starts really really early so so we that's why it's so important that we build it re relationship so we can be right. part of that journey we don't want to be, it's like it, the way we got the information from customer mm -hmm. has been through the traditional surveys and and focus groups, or or at times we have been interviewing. Well, now we have a whole another set of information through all these set these channels that we we need to capture this information. Right. We need, we need to analyze this information so we can create new experience offers for the customers of the future. Right, absolutely, I agree with this. And I know all you hotels are saying out there, hey, there's uh, there must be more to this. There's gotta be something uh, more to this. And it really is about making those meaningful connections with the customers where they wanna be seen. And more and more these days, it's about finding ways to be able to uh, deliver that sense of personalization and that sense of authenticity and all of those great experiences. Uh oh, I said experience, everybody take a shot. And um, <laughs> You know, and really being able to um, get inside their psyche, to become um, one with their mind. Now, you've created this great content and stuff like that, but then what happens? You start, you've got people inspired, you've got people excited. How do you get them to start to come around and have a conversation? And I should say before you answer that, folks, if, you know, when you're asking questions in there, I love it. I think it's absolutely great, but there's probably a 20 or 30 second delay until... Um, we can address it at a minimum and then probably a little bit more time because we're talking about it. So if I don't, we don't answer a question right away, do not panic. We'll get to it. So uh, Mr. Morch, uh, what's the next step to do in, in regards to this customer journey? <clears throat> well, and, and you, you touch on, on, on a couple of things as, that, that that's important that to, it's like, I'm, I'm going to add a little shot words in here. So we, so we, for those that, that takes the shot games, uh, of course, we, we need to understand. It's like we, we like to use this word customer experience, and customer experience is something mm -hmm. that, of course, has been around for, 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 for a long time. It's nothing that's new today. The only thing that's new today with the customer experience is that because of the digital tools that we have, is and the, the way, as I said, that the customers have now discovered these tools is that they can amplify the experience, they can share that the experience in real time. Right. Uh, but the, the, the customer experience rev represent the over, overall uh, interaction that the customers have between the hotel and, 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 and the customers over the duration of the relationship. So, so that, that has not really changed that much. Right. And, and we also talked about like we have to see this in context with personalizations, which is also a fancy word that everybody likes to use now, uh, uh, which is just about tailoring the surf service offer to, to accommodate the specific. Right customer or group or individual or corporate client that, that they have. But but the most important part, when we look at the customer journey, we see that they, in, in context with customer expectations today. And and, and that's what we see that the, the digital ex, uh, experience is changing, is the, it's the change in the customer right. expectation. Because they the customer expectation is today that they expect real-time engagement real-time information right. and the, that the booking process is, is going to be simple and take them directly because that's what we see when i go out and do research on hotels on on facebook linkedin twitter whatever channel we, we look at we see that they still want to use the traditional way of getting the customers so so the abandonment rates is right. still very high because they use that traditional uh, but what we see now that the customers they just want a simple, direct type of action. Right. That get them to the point of making because they already at that time they already may have the intent and are ready to make booking. Absolutely. Okay. So let's uh you know let's remove that wedge from uh, between you and the customer. Let's get them down from the mountaintop and get them into the hotel. How do you actually go ahead 
and do that. I want some, a little bit more actionable insight from you, Ari, because um, I love what you're saying. The philosophy is absolutely correct, but you know, how do we, how do you gain feedback from those customers as uh, Jason Cronin out there who also, you know, wants to know a little bit, of, you know, a, a, about um, uh, what are they booking? You know, what are they doing in order to make these types of, uh, you know, uh, connections with the, with the customer? Uh, that's uh, uh, the the thousand dollar question. Of, of uh, yeah, of course. That's why we had you on here, man. And uh, you're worth a million dollars in my book, are uh, Yeah, and 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 this is where we we really kind of have to get down to to being a little bit creative and and start as hoteliers to 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 think out outside the box. And 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 of course we have to see it in context with with uh, with things that deals with the idle customers. Uh, of course, that's important that the hotel understand who the idle customers is. But something that what we we see that uh, uh, brands is starting to do today, which is is very effective, is in, is they 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 work with what we call brand ambassadors or brand advocates. And and what we do is is like. And that's what I'm, I, I would do myself as I work with hotels as a brand ambassador to help mm -hmm. them with exactly what you say, is the question you're saying now is, is that because we go out there and connect with the customers, we ask them the questions that the hotels, that's important to, to identify right. the, the pain points that, that you have. What will it take for you to, to get into that in, engagement? And usually like what, what we see is that the, the the customers we see that they are moving away from from for example from, for the loyal customers right. using loyal loyalty points towards upgrades. Well, the loyal the customers they want to use now more exchange it to to an experience where you include the local community, local restaurants, uh, exchange it for uh, booking, for example, a Uber ride or or a Lyft ride or or engage with kind of have a tour set up so so that so that you build experience of, of things that the customers is really you looking for and and what we also try to identify is how can we make the experience more inclusive so so that because in what i mean with the inclusive is that we we see there are so many customers that that that, that the hotels is is not really Taking care of if if that's a good word for it as uh, like uh, I work with the, uh, the uh, our friends from from um, sensorycity.org which is deals right. with with deals with autism and and uh, and and so shout out to my friend for there they do an awesome job but but there is like we can what we do is communicate with those type of customers to learn what is the things that can make a difference for you to make a booking with your hotel. And often we discovered that it's very simple things that that makes a difference. Right. That All right. The, I, I'm thinking. I'm thinking we need to get uh, Jason Cronin here as a, as another guest because he's asking so many freaking great questions uh, out there. But before we get to that question, I think it's time for a hydration break. This one brought to you by Sky Touch, the industry's leading PMS. It's important to stay hydrated so you can have lots of great conversations and not pass out while doing a LinkedIn live broadcast. So the Jason's uh, Jason's point um, out there. Uh, give us some examples of what's going on in your hometown market there in Mississippi. Maybe a, a company that you're working with that you find has really listened to your advice and is finding much success. Maybe go through a little bit about how you've been able to help them achieve that success. Well, in in in, in the local communities here, and 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 and. and for those of us, uh, uh, kind of, uh, since we are on, on, on the day of uh, 8th of January, right. and, and uh, uh, for those of you that's Elvis fans, he will probably be 85 years. So I think it, to the, that will be today, if I don't recall wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so Elvis is a, is, a, is, a, is a huge driver for tourism to, to all local areas. So, so we, it, it's here, it's, uh, it's about the, the local communities we right. we seeing that the, the the local hotels is of course that that uh, we have a Hilton garden in here locally that that works closely with with the, the Elvis uh, organizations that to to bringing more tourism to to the city and 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 this is all about again uh, it's it's all about including the customers in the stories 
that's why I, I say that the brand ambassadors is so important because what do you mean by including the customers in the stories we want to work not only it's like with thought leaders and 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 the fancy word that we use today influencers we want to work with the customers so 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 that we understand why are they coming to to our city right what 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 will, would you like to see what what can we make do to make sure that you're not only staying here but you stay here longer you choose our hotels and you refer them back to your friends and, and network so so including that it's like this is by what i mean about the brand ambassador putting myself or or people like myself in a brand ambassador role because right. personalization is is not by giving the customer a creepy offer that 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 you you put put their their pillows from home in in the, in the room or something like that no it's it's more about me helping them helping understanding what what their pain points is what can i do uh, to to guide you to like to the local elvis scenes that that right. that i know that's going to add additional value than just going to to the museum here because there Elvis was in a lot of different places than just the museum here yeah and that, right. because that's what the, you see the tra traditional tour agencies they just take them to the spots that they think that but they don't think that take them to the unique spots that you know that the locals know more about that that will give them right. some i think you said the magic word the places that locals know all about and i think that's what each and every of us uh, want these days when we're going on a uh, a leisure type of experience it's no longer good enough just to say hey go down to the road to uh, i don't know the benihana or the hula hands or something like that you want to create authentic experiences for your customers and that means getting them to go to the places that locals are going too. And I, I like what you said about the Elvis thing, because it, it, it really gets me thinking about how you can engage better with the local community in order to be, give your customers that actionable insight that's going to win the market share while getting them to love you and want to come back again and again. Uh, all right. I got one good example for you. I went to um, a property called uh, Yays, Y-A-Y-S in Amsterdam. I had a tour of there and I visited it. And it was great. It was a service department style hotel. And it was that part was fabulous, blah, blah, blah. But what really struck me, Ari, was they had a book. And it was a book of all of the local businesses that were there and what those businesses were about. And it wasn't just visit the bakery two blocks from here. It was, you know, this is Jane. She runs the bakery. This is what she loves. And it really, uh, created a sense of the experiences that you could have while engaging that local community and creating a uh, what I would say is a positive feedback loop between your community, your hotel, and your potential clients and bringing everyone together for um, success on all of those different counts. Yeah, yeah I, th I think that's a great example. It's like I can, uh, one thing that's like creating experiences today that that's important i was just at not too long ago at in in dubai where i stayed at the uh, the Boko hotel there in dubai which is also a great hotel and and there it's like at, when i checked in they gave me this little envelope with a date inside it and and then, and then on the front have a date on the Boko hotels it's, it's a, just a really cool and simple touch that that we see that hotels is not really taken advantage of it's those simple touches that we want to understand that that adds value to the customers it, it don't like because a lot of hotels seems to think that this has to be really expensive we had to go all the way and and they thinking on things like what what rich Carlton or the type of service offers that they right. provide but we, we don't all have to be rich Carlton. we we can we can emulate or model what they do. And like you said, we bring in the local, we can bring in local, like chefs. Do you have something local, unique local conscience? Like mm -hmm. why doesn't the hotel invite the local chef into the hotel, Right. serve some of the local food that's unique for the area to, to educate the customers of what's, what's there. The same with the, like they can bring in a, a local, somebody that, 
a coach for for yoga for for or or, or mm -hmm. something like that that that's really unique and right. or, or here and there here in Tupelo, for example we can we can encourage the what i encourage the hotels here yeah to bring in the elvis impersonator at the hotels to welcome the welcome the guests that's uh, that's awesome because yeah. really you know again the message is you don't want people bouncing around the room you want them out in the lobby you want them out in the community you want them making memories which they will then associate with the great hotel experience that you provide to them. And I think you you really hit the nail on the head there. I'd love the idea of bringing that Elvis impersonator in because then you're bringing that, that whole fundamental understanding of the community right through the doors into your lobby and kind of blurring the lines between hotel, community, and experience there. Oh, take another shot. Take another shot, don't I? <laughs> 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 yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a scary part when we talk too much about experience we're going to get, get too many shots here he did again good thing we're drinking water today because it's a, a little bit too early but i would like to issue everyone a challenge every time we say that e word if you do take an actual alcoholic beverage let's see if you're still standing at the end of this particular program so how is this really effective in terms of generating those repeat bookings over and over and over again once you uh, once you find this uh, in play? Well, uh, uh, of course, there we have to rely on, on, on the data and, and the information because that's important for, for, like I said, it's like we, we have to make sure that we measure all the key performance indicators and, and, and in in a context with what what's important both for the hotels and also for the the digital experience part of it is like and and I looked at data and the reports that we have get from from several sources like uh, I looked at from the Aberdeen group that do the research on the, around the customer service uh, the McKinsey group that kind of do the customer experience Deloitte which is I know, a lot of hotels you know. Uh, kind of takes on on the customer journey itself, and and the Google, yep. uh, the thing with Google that is deals with the micro moment. Well, they, and of course Expedia and TripAdvisor. But what we see there, it's like from the data, and when it comes to the ROI, is that when we focus on on this process that we talked about today, is that uh, year over year itself that we see that ROI improves or there's a change in in a positive direction up to 24 percent and uh, the uh, improvement also is comes to, to to dealing with the customer service cost that we see a positive in, in increase that up to over 20 percent in the service cost and also what's important for 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 hotels of course is is uh, uh, right. positive mentions on on things like that deal with social media uh, trip advisor or in, in in reference to to reviews we see an a, a, a increase a positive increase up to close to 20 percent that uh, i think is 18 18 percent was this last number we saw and and of course in the improvement in the average sale sales cycle also is, is very important we see an improvement there that is close to 17 percent and more important also, which is also something that also is getting more important today for hotel, is upselling. It's yeah. that you see an uh, increasement that that the dig digital experience when we, we put the customer journey in context with the digital experience, we see an improvement up to five, fifteen point three percent. So it's it, and there's of course it's like uh, I did just an article with my friends at the Oki. And mm -hmm. which kind of is, is a new inventive service tool that deals with upselling for a hotel. So, so we're getting all these tools today, which is important that, that it's not about using the word the experience or digital experience. Or I hope now I'm getting everybody I have too many shots here. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it's, 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 it's all about creative solutions that, that uh, tech solutions, uh, tools, and strategies that. That impact the hotel growth in, in right. Ireland. So, so we have to see it, like we said, in context with, with the local community, work with the local people, lo work with the local total leaders, influencers to, to see how they can add value to the whole process. Right. right. And uh, yeah, and it is about adding value. And I'd like to uh, give a good shout out over there to uh, Melissa because she's saying making an experience, not a stay. 
It's uh, it's a saying for a reason. I mean, she's absolutely right about that because you really need to cut through the clutter. And to me, I equate this to being the difference between somebody who has a job and somebody who has a career. I think we can understand that the, the nuances there are pretty clear and you want people that are gonna be loyal, not just stay with you. I found the worst thing a hotelier can do is just give me a clean, comfortable room. I'm gonna have a fine stay, but I'm not gonna have a memorable stay. Now, I'm not saying uh, you know throw a bed bugs in my bed. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna forget that. But what I am saying is that you need to be different, and that's why Ra, your point about that upselling, I think, makes sense because it ties very, very well into that value proposition. If you could give the customers out there something that they think they're getting a great value on, say an upgrade. For less money that you would have uh, charged them if they had booked it in advance and you presented this opportunity for them um you know at the, the property or even creating some additional add-on services that match the uh the particular customers um you know ethics <laughs> or you know, behaviors or the activities they like to do those are the types of stuff that are going to help you break through the barrier help to be more memorable and really help to create um, more direct booking guests. Are you finding Ari? And uh, Jason again asked us a question. He wants to ask about direct booking guests, meaning those that don't get referrals from social media. Do you treat those differently? Are they more valuable? Are they less valuable? How do you perceive direct booking versus those brought in via social media and some of these other assets? Well, that, uh... Of course, you shouldn't. Direct booking is is valuable to any hotel today, and and so 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 direct booking is, is something right. we we can't treat differently, no matter where they come from. It's, it's it's the most important thing is that we find new ways, new strategies to earn more direct bookings. We a lot of hotels kind of have a little bit backwards. They they see OTAs and and new competitors as as a comp, comp, well, they dipping too much into to their domain. Right. But, but it's, it's like, it's more that we have to be innovative ourselves to see how can we tap into new market segments using these tools that we, we talked about today to, to kind of like, one, like we take talk about the upsellings, like what, what we see is when I looked at OK, what they do, they do some fun things like, where you can upsell with just putting like for example a goldfish in the in the in a room or, right. or or you can have a, a old fashioned record player in here in tuple in the room that's playing an elvis song when you come in right. checking into the room so so did, uh, direct booking today is is all about the the creatives and uh, that that you use the digital experience for a creative direct booking because then the story and the connection that the customer is going to have with the hotel is going to be really unique. Uh, and, and we're going to see a shift in, in, in their direct booking. We, I don't think we're going to see too much of the traditional uh, direct bookings that that, that, that uh, James is, is kind of asking for, that mm -hmm. even though they're going to be, be there for a while, we're going to see, particularly with the millennials, that, that most of the direct booking is going to come through mobile devices uh, in, in the future. Uh, well, I think we're already at that point where most people are doing stuff through their mobile devices. And I see a schism between, um, not to insult us, us older folks, right? Us Gen X type people and baby boomer people versus the millennials and the Generation Z um, people. They interact with the world differently. One isn't necessarily better than the other, but you better get it in gear with your mobile strategy if you want to be able to find uh, success. So uh, maybe, all right, underscore some ideas about how on a mobile, um, making mobile efforts to, to connect with people on their customer journey differs than what people might have thought was important even just two, three years ago. Well, it's, it's uh, the the mobile experience and and, and how it differed from 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 what we saw two three years ago or or even a couple of years ago is that is is that thing one thing that usually comes on the on uh, on the top of the list that when I have on my board here, which is gratification, because that's what we know today that the, the younger generation is is looking for instant gratifications and 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 is that the mobile 
devices and and we see that more hotels than today they provide the the, the, the customer with their own type of applications which kind of make the booking process going faster uh, it allows them to to communicate more faster with the, with, the, with the customers to to sort out any type of issues that they have with if they're stuck at the airport for for whatever reason if they need help with directions right. or, or or things so it, it's it's more about that that what we see the mobile is helping us with is the communication that we can provide now real-time information real-time com communications and and this is what we see now that more hotels is bringing on board front-end tools for example for their frontline staff that that they can everybody it's not just the concierge that is the concierge you you, right. you all, more almost but everybody uh, at the hotel, a concierge, so they can communicate, they can identify the customers. And, and that's what we see that hotels is getting better to, to looking at the social profile so they can see that, okay, James posted on, on Facebook or right. posted on Twitter that, I'm okay, I'm stuck here at the airport. I'm trying to get somebody to... So that that's, that's an opportunity for the hotel that right. we never saw before today that there's you have to take advantage of those opportunities to give customers something valuable in real time absolutely and i will say um i will say it's really time to uh, set your gear shift to the uh, the high gear of your mobile strategy uh, jason that one was uh, for you over there but what do you tell hoteliers out there that have been at it for a long time and really haven't dedicated a uh, enough man hours to a digital strategy because a lot of times back in the earlier days of social media it was kind of like an afterthought it was kind of like um hey somebody's got an hour i'll just take this hourly employee and throw them in there blah 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 what would you recommend for hoteliers that own one two even three properties to do in terms of having somebody in charge of all of this it's important for them to balance how much money they're spending but it is also entirely essential that they uh, that they have some sort of a strategy because you got you got no choice really right yeah no it, it's 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 uh, it's critical that you have a strategy for for it and and it's, of course you have to see it in like I said earlier it, it's important that you you see that strategy in in context with your idle customers and and you, and that's what we usually also when we go in with hotels. To, to help them understand it's like a, you have to do an audit process of the hotel so so you you right. you kind of know, know if the customers actually are on mobile devices are they using all this technology mm -hmm. if not there's a lot like you you kind of shooting in the blind but but so you have to understand if they are actually there first of all and then once you you understand that they are there then you have to set up a strategy that is cost effective and in in the right setting for the hotel so it adds valuable to the hotel and and the, and the customers and that's why it is we want to make sure that to hotels also provide the, the employees with, with these type of tools because they are their best resources today right. to help them gather all this information and and it is not uh, it's like today, we have seen in the past that a lot of the, the hotels, these type of small hotels, small small hotel groups, they use time and resources as as, a, as an excuse. Right. But but today, what we see with these tools that that we have available, and also the way this, the strategies that we help them with, is exactly to help them buy more time, buy more resources with setting up effective strategies that can right. respond in real time can give them that turnaround that they are looking for and reach it like like i said we have to look look outside for the customer because there's customers that are going to be in the area yeah i but mean they, uh, but yeah, the hotel yeah. is don't like i said that if james like i said was at the airport and he, he's i'm looking for a hotel and tonight i got stuck at the airport here in the city or stuck at the, i'm stuck here i can't get out of the city some is there somebody that I get I see that all the time, mm -hmm. on, on, and and I and and the, I never see any hotel reach out to those or very few hotels right. reach out to those type of customers that that and and that's where we need to learn 
and be, become a little bit better as hoteliers today. Yes, I, I agree. And listen, hoteliers out there, um, that's why you need to work with a hotel uh, marketing coach such as uh, Ari Morch over here, because you're in a world of you don't know what you don't know. This is all new. It's changing. It's fast paced. There's a lot of nuances that you or I will never be able to understand. So by investing a little cash, I have a feeling you're going to get back a much higher ROI over there. But we've got another question for you, and I love all these questions that are coming through. And I want to thank everybody for that. Um, um, you know, how do the various mobile booking engines really generate those direct bookings? And secondly, um, what are you seeing for um, on-demand bookings same day outside of something like Hotel Tonight? <clears throat> At, uh, outside the hotel tonight, it is, is, is uh, what we, what I talked about be, before is that we're seeing more hotels now make creating their own applications for 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 for, for, for booking, right. and then, and uh, we we seeing them adding now uh, taking it to to the next next step that that it's, it's not only about booking that but they. It's, it's about the process that involves that from from the bookings to the check-in that they can they can automate pre-check-in like like you have done with airlines you can do a pre-check-in and, mm -hmm. and then you get the notification through through your SMSs that that the, the room is ready and you can use your mobile device as a key mm -hmm. on on, right. on to on the door and then everything is from room service is is done on on. On mobile devices, so 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 that that process is something that we see is is, is coming, and and more we get into to artificial intelligence, and and more hotels that taking advantage of of uh, uh, automation services. That that's where automation comes in today in 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 pictures, like we, we deal with uh, chatbots, which is 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 kind of getting really on very popular today. It's yeah. like I, I worked a lot with my friends at Ask Suite, so, so shout shout out to them. It's like they, they their services is great for helping automate it, the processes that that we see with the booking to help streamline the booking process to to for the conversion that that we're looking for because at the, in the end of the day. Right. You know, talk with us, the the general manager or the, the the hotel owners or the hotel boards. They will look at the revenue. They will look at the the, the occupancy that's going to be important. So we we need, need 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 to make sure that we have the tools and the process in in place that tell the story. Not the only thing, because when we mention engagement and and building relationship, that's not very kind of sexy. If that, that that's a fine fun, fun, fun word. It, uh, the hotel owners will they don't they will look at their revenue and the occupancy and what we did to make that happen all right so what do you see once the customer leaves the hotel what do you see about getting them to come back how do you envision that sort of process uh working because i get emails that say thanks for your stay and they all seem to be like, tell us how we did. Survey, 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 survey. I'm sick and tired of surveys because nobody ever responds to me after I fill out a survey. And it really doesn't do anything to make me more loyal to them or, or whatever. So what are the actual things that you should do to get people excited about coming back again? Well, <clears throat> that's the, the uh, that's a fun question. And that's a fun part of the, the, the digital experience today. So, mm -hmm. so it's like, because the digital experience is, is like I said earlier, is, is that, it's also about listening, care, connect, and build relationship. Right. And so we want to make sure that the customers today is part of our community. And that's where we also brought in, where I brought in, in the brand ambassadors, like people like myself, because we want to make sure that we communicate not only in the front end during the experience, but also in the back end of the experience, because we want to make sure that not only the individual is coming back, we want to make sure that the, the individual is bringing back their friends and pairs. More important that they're bringing back groups or corporate clients to the hotels. So, so this is the things that we want to make sure that we have in place for the hotel, that the retention is, is, the, is the key word the, to work with these people to, to see it's like that they, we have during the experience, gone above and beyond to to be part of their story so so that in the end on the back of the end of the stories they give the reviews that is of course in in, in like with like i said earlier that 
that the right. improvement of the reviews or the, the mention in the back end because of the customer experience is increasing because we was part of this story. We took an active role in the story. We became, we, I'm, I'm the person that's helped them with the personalization part. Mm -hmm. It's not just, be, just because I want them to enjoy the experience there and then, no. It's because I want them to enjoy the experience afterwards. So this is right. a, me a memory, a story that they can share with the community because the amplification process happens in the back end. That's when they start amplifying and the story starts living its own life depending on... Right. Because we, we have to understand the customer states that deals with perceptions and behavior and actions. And, and once we understand those things in context, with the content that we live deliver in the back end, we have to be part of them, kind of encourage them to give us the, the, the feedback that that is valuable to to not only me as a brand ambassador, but right, to the hotel and also future guests. Right. And speaking of brand ambassadors, um, I know you guys are going to flame me for saying, uh, you know. For, for, for saying that it's all comes down to your people. And the reason why I say you're gonna flame me is because you're saying like, it's so hard to find great people out there right now. The labor pool is impossible, but it is absolutely essential to your strategy of making those emotional connections with the guests because that's the type of stuff that's gonna pay dividends afterwards. That's the type of thing that's going to get the, the customer to go home and share those stories, right? You're never gonna believe the experience I had on property and you're never gonna believe what that, uh, that man or woman did for me at the hotel. They were really, really cool and they helped me have a, a, a great stay. Would you, uh, would you agree with that, with, with that statement that um, having great staff that makes those emotional connections is really important? That a happy staff is, is 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 critical, and and the team that your employees is your, as I said before, is your most valuable in, asset, and and that's why we encourage hotels to to empower empower the employees to provide them with the tools and put in place programs for the employees to to become brand advocates or brand ambassadors for the hotels, and and uh, and apprentice programs is something that of course we, we want to see more of the hotels so, so people outside the hotels can learn more about what hotels have to offer and like we said earlier invite the community invite the local community into the hotel so mm -hmm. you, they can uh, understand this is why I want to use the mobile device we, we talked about that it's like we want to make sure that the, we bring on the stories from the employees, let the employees right. use the, the mobile devices on, tell them, tell the community, tell the customers about a day at the hotel from an employee perspective. What does it take? What is nice. it? So, so they, so because, because we have to educate the customers more about what it, because uh, as a hotelier, I know that just like when, we had customers coming. They could have made the booking at booking.com. They could have made the booking at Expedia or, or whatever they made it. But still, in their mindset, that booking was a direct booking. Mm -hmm. So, so we, that's what we have to, as hotelier, educate hotel, the customers that there is a difference between a booking at, at Expedia or Orbitz or booking.com versus a direct direct booking at the hotel. All right, so how do you do that? Because you don't want them to feel like less of a customer for booking through a third party source as opposed to booking direct while simultaneously wanting to win them over so they'll book direct when they return. Uh, <clears throat> that that is 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 a, is a, is a really good question. It's like because you you don't want to undermine anybody because every customer right. should should be valuable no matter where they their reservation came from, and because we we seen that on 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 right. discussion boards. I mean, a lot and, of customers yeah. out there don't think about the nuances between an OTA and a direct booking. They think exactly. they're going to have the same exact experience. Us hotel industry wants to know there's a difference, but not the regular consumer. Sorry, please continue. No, it's it's and and, and so that's. Where we see that we, that's why we kind of get back to the employees again, and on, and also like I told the, the brand ambassadors, we have to use them to our advantage to to kind of give that little extra without feeling that you differentiate between customer A and customer B. 
if they come from uh, OTA versus is, if they come to, to a direct booking, it is, of course, is a, it's a very tricky balance. And, and it, we have to, to, that's where the skill set comes a little bit in play that we, we make more to make sure that we have the right talent, the right skill set in the hotels. And, and of course, we want to make sure that we can do everything in, in, in our power to, to, to cut the, down on the, on the, the turnaround and that's why happiness is is is, is so critical to 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 right not to turn down on the on the turnaround because else else we're gonna be ending up in a cycle where where customers we don't have anybody to educate the customers so so so, so i think it's all boiled down to to education training uh, providing the customers with the right tool empower them focus on on that you 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 give them so so they become a valuable asset to your hotel they stay longer with the hotels longer they you get them to stay with the hotels more they they become a part of that uh, service offer that that uh, or the experience that can help customers educate customers that that they, right. there's there's a difference between a direct booking versus a booking on the hotel wow. but all, they, they all, OTA is not going to disappear to norm tomorrow uh, they're not going to disappear no <laughs> <laughs> well all this good advice is really making my synapses burn over here I will tell you that uh, all right so all right um I think maybe it's time to um wrap all of this up in a in a bow for us unless there's another issue or two that you want to discuss but um i'm feeling like we've gone through a lot there's a lot of information here how would you boil it down into the messaging that you want people to take away with them once they get off this call then i'll give you a chance for a shameless plug <laughs> now, what i want them to 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 take away that that when we look at the customer journey, we have to look at it in, in context with the customer experience, with the customer expectation. And the digital part of it is, is just it's a tool that we use to collect the data to help us better understand all these different micro moments that, that that's impact the, the, the customer journey. So I want to help hotels in a way that what I believe is, is a new way to, to help hotels. And, and, and that's becoming part of your team. I want them to, to put me on board as, as their brand ambassador, as I said, to be there, gather that information that to help them. Because we know that today when it comes to the, to, to the market today, it's like, in the back in the days when we dealt with Google, Facebook, Twitter, social, any, any social media, organic content was something that we was able to put out there. Today, organic content is a, it is very hard. You have to have a really highly skilled team today to to create organic content that's going to bring you right. organic. So, so what what we see today is that you the only way for you to to kind of be seen is that you used to have to start with a paid content. But we, what I'm doing now is I focus the paid content we have to see in context with the earned content, which is more important to me. I want to help the hotel with the earned content, meaning bringing not only when you bring me in as a brand ambassador, you're not only bringing me in, you bring in me and my community. Right. You, the, that means that everybody that that we are getting in contact contact with, we're gonna be, make sure that we tell the stories. We're gonna help you bring the customer stories out. We're gonna bring with the, work with the local community to bring that story. How can you work with the local community in that context that we say to to help you amplify the story in a context that you have not seen before and be part of a future that that, that take advantage of technology because value information to me is something that i believe is really important value information in, in context with growth mindset value information is the, the the new technology and the tool and the strategies and techniques that we design to achieve product differentiation meaning that how your products differentiate from others at the low cost that, that's the key low cost so we want to make sure that we provide right. cost effective solutions for the hotels that that help them with the time the, the 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 pain points that we talked about that that deals with time and resources and and so the way they where they can contact me is uh, uh, at my blog which is 
uh, Aremorc, A-R-E-M-O-R-C-H dot com, or they can connect with me here on LinkedIn and shoot me a direct message or uh, send me an email at hotelblogger at autumnwork.com. Right. Now, remember, your trip is short, so go ahead and contact uh, R over there because he is going to be able to help you energize your business, create that organic reach that you're looking for. And, uh, yeah, Jason, I see that value is subjective over there. He's uh, making another comment over there. It's right. It's all about figuring out what that value proposition is for each and every individual customer. And I think next time um, we'll, we'll get you back on the show. And I want to talk more about that storytelling, how to find that story within your property. I do a lot of that. But the message that I want to take away from to, that I would like you guys to take away, besides all the great stuff that Ari said out there, is you need to get out there and you need to experiment. Sure. Stuff may not work, but stuff may also be absolutely revolutionary and help your bottom line in a meaningful way. There's no shame in trying and not being successful. The only shame is if you don't do anything at all. Get out there, experiment, figure out what your path to success is for your particular hotel brand and your particular set of clients. I want to thank everybody for being here today. If you haven't downloaded our podcast, make sure you uh, you subscribe wherever you can find podcasts. We got this show. And of course I do checking in with Anthony and Glenn, which I of course do with one and only Anthony Melchiri of uh, Television's Hotel Impossible and lots of other great stuff that he's doing online, including Instant Turnaround, where he goes and he fixes a business in 60 minutes or less live on Facebook. How cool is that? Also check out our Hotel Design Podcast, and our Hotel Tech Podcast, the Business of Hotels Podcast, and our most recent episode of the No Vacancy Podcast features uh, Scott Gerber of the Gerber Group. Yeah, that company worked and pretty much created the uh, the modern bar scene in hotels. You'll learn a lot about how to increase your food and beverage business with that. So with that, for our March and myself, Glenn Hausman, I want to thank you all for watching. And remember, you've got one life, so blaze on. See you next time, people. <laughs> See you guys.